Welcome to this video tutorial on the zero exponent and negative exponent uh, properties in Algebra 1. The way we're going to go about showing these is we're first going to kind of show where they come from, give you an idea of how you can use patterns to discover these. Um, if you look at 2 to the third, 2 to the third is 8. Uh, we know that, we've already talked about that. 2 to the second is 4, uh, 2 to the first is 1, or is 2. And so you have this pattern that's developed. As, as we go down in one, 1 in each exponent, 2 to the 3rd, 2 to the 2nd, 2 to the 1st, we're actually dividing by 2 each time. And so to explore this, it only makes sense if we divide the la next one by 2, we get to the 1. So 2 to the 0, drop your exponent by 1, would equal 1. You can look at the same thing from the 3's. Uh, 3 to the 3rd is 27. Um, 3 to the 2nd is 9. 3 to the first is 3. So when we're doing these, uh, again, you're dropping each exponent by 1, subtracting 1 from the exponent, and you're dividing the answers by 3. Um, so when we divide 3 by 3, we get 1, and we go down 1 in the exponent, we get 0. So it shows again that 3 to the 0 equals 1, looking at these patterns. Um, and you can do this for any number. You can do this for 4, you can do this for 5, you can do this for 6, you can do it for 7. Um, it's just going to keep going on. And every time you're going to get down, you're going to have three to, 2 to the 0 equals 1, 3 to the 0 equals 1, 4 to the 0 equals 1, and so on. Uh, and that's always going to be the case. And that leads us to um, the, the zero exponent property, um, or the zero property of exponents, I guess, maybe would be a better way to say it. But we, we've written it here as a zero exponent property. Um, and essentially what it says is that any time you raise a... Um, number or a quantity, it's, it's probably best to say quantity, I'm writing that there because it doesn't just apply to one number, it can be a few numbers multiplied together or whatever, but any quantity, quantity raised to the zero power uh, is always, always, always equal to one. So no matter what value we put on there, it's going to equal one. We can write it out using symbols um, if we want. Um, and just show that any value m raised to the zero power equals one, no matter what. And it becomes a very, very, very powerful property that we'll use a lot. Um, you can write a you know a long number out, 3,132 to the zero, that also equals one. So it doesn't matter what value that is or how big it is, three to the zero always equals one. So that's the zero property. The negative exponent property, we're gonna explore the exact same way. We'll start with two to the third equals eight. Uh, 2 to the second equals 4, 2 to the first equals 2, we now know 2 to the 0 equals 1. We're just dividing by 2 each time. So now, when we do our next one, if we divide, if we drop one power to 2 to the negative 1, and then divide 1 by 2, you get 1 half. So 2 to the negative 1 equals 1 half. 2 to the negative 2, well, 1 half divided by 2 is like multiplying 1 half times 1 half is 1 fourth. 2 to the negative 3, well, 2 to the negative 3, divide 1 fourth by 2, you get 1 eighth. Now we look at the pattern, and, and we're going to look, um, well, we're gonna, let's go look at the 3's and just do the same thing so we can see this pattern twice. Uh, we already know 3 to the 3rd is 27, and 3 to the 2nd is 9, and 3 to the 1st is 3, and 3 to the 0 is 1. Those are what we did on that last slide. Now we can look at 3 to the negative 1. Well, 1 divided by 3 is just 1 third. Um, now 3 to the negative 2, well, divide by 3 again. 1 third divided by 3 is one ninth. And three to the negative three, well, one ninth divided by three is one over twenty seven. So if you look at the pattern, you can kind of uh, group things together. And so we can we can first start looking at the twos and group the two to the first and two to the negative first together. And then you can look at the two to the second and kind of group it with two to the negative second. And then you can look at two to the third and group it with two to the negative third. And if you notice the only difference is on two to the third it's eight 2 to the negative third is the same thing except 1 over 8. And the same thing was 2 to the second and 2 to the first. 1 over whatever the, pow the positive power is. And then look at the 3 is the same thing as the case. 3 uh, to the first is 3. 3 to the negative first is 1 over 3. 3 to the second is 9. 3 to the negative second is 1 over 9. 3 to the third is 27. 3 to the negative third is 1 over 27. And so if we want to write out our negative exponent property, we're going to consider that as how we do it. Um, and this would continue to go on if you did 2 to the 4th and 2 to the negative 4th and 2 to the 5th and 2 to the negative 5th. And essentially what it is, the, the, the negative exponent property, we're going to write out as a symbols. A to the a negative power okay, is equal, always equal to 
um, 1 over a to that power. So the way we can write it is a to the negative n is equal to the reciprocal of a to the n. That's what it always is. And if you remember, reciprocal is just 1 over. So if we write it out in symbols, it's a to the negative n equals 1 over a to the n. So 2 to the third, or 2 to the negative third, is just equal to 1 over 2 to the third. Right, which is what, what, we, what we showed over there on our chart, which is 1 eighth. So we can show doing it either way. So you just remember that that's always the case. Two to the, a to the negative n is equal 1 over a to the n.